And that brings us to Ali's final score. Hey guys, welcome to episode six of Fact Checked. This is the series where I, Pete, as a trained psychologist and behavioral scientist, review the psychology and behavioral science advice given by other people on the internet. In this episode, we're looking at Ali Abdal. If you're unfamiliar with Ali's work, he has a YouTube channel with almost two million subscribers that centers around the theme of productivity. Ali is an extremely productive person himself. Not only does he have a very successful YouTube channel, but he also holds a first class degree from the University of Cambridge. Cambridge in medicine, which means that he's also a doctor. In this video, Ali's talking about how to make productive activities rewarding and fun, which is something which I care a lot about as someone who specializes in the psychology of habits. So let's see Ali Abdal's advice and see what score he gets at the end of the video. As you may or may not know, I am in the middle of writing a book and it's a book about productivity. And so I've been thinking a lot over the last few months about like, what does productivity actually mean to me? And the main insight that I've realized is that productivity to be honest, isn't really about getting more things done. It's mostly about learning to enjoy the journey because when we're having fun with doing the things that we're doing, then productivity kind of just takes care of itself. And this is kind of obvious, right? Like, you know, when we're doing stuff that we enjoy, when we're hanging out with friends or watching Netflix or playing video games, we're never worried about our productivity. We're never worried about motivation. We never say, I need to be motivated to watch this next episode of, of Netflix or to play Warzone with the boys. We only really need motivation, in inverted commas, for the things that are like short-term painful for long-term gain. And we as humans, we are absolutely terrible at motivating ourselves to do things in service to our future selves because we're all obsessed with instant gratification. This is one of the most simple, most powerful, and yet so often overlooked findings in psychology, which is that people are far more likely to do things that they enjoy and find fun. And so one of the messages that I try and preach on my channel as well is that if you wanna build good habits, try find a way to make that habit rewarding. How do we make ourselves do things that are short-term painful in service to our future selves? How do we make ourselves, how, how do we motivate ourselves to be productive, to sit down and learn to code or to do our homework assignment or to work on that side project after we've come home from a hard day of work because we know we wanna be entrepreneurs at the end of the day? And there's broadly two ways of answering this question. Uh, the first one is something that I call the Muhammad Ali method. <laughs> this is called the Muhammad Ali method because Muhammad Ali, famous boxer, has this famous quote where he said something like, I hated every minute of training, but I said, don't quit suffer now and live the rest of your life as a champion. And Muhammad Ali is amazing, everyone loves him and all that stuff, obviously, but I think this approach to work, as like work equals suffering, that's an approach that I'm not really a fan of. And so I think the problem with this Muhammad Ali approach to life, i.e. this work equals suffering approach to life, is that it kind of glorifies the hustle and it glorifies the grind that you need to suffer, this needs to be painful. And if it's painful, it's because you're doing it right. And if you're not doing it, it's because you can't stand the pain. And Ali's not alone in this feeling as well. We have good data to support the fact that if you rely on willpower to try and achieve your goals and build your habits, you're only going to fail. Instead, making your good habits fun and rewarding is a far more sustainable way and it's actually how most people achieve greatness. And what Ali says about society is so true as well. We seem to have this heroism, glorification, almost fetishization of people who just work through really hard times and that's how they achieve their goals. That somehow, if you suffer more, then that makes you a better person. But actually, this is a really toxic way to think about productivity and all of the data from behavioral science that we have points that this is a really weak way to be productive and that a much better way is instead to design your environment in a way that'll help you be more productive. So basically, Ali is off to a great start with this video, don't rely on willpower, try and make your productive habits fun. I wanna share five or so techniques that I found really helpful in my life over the last 10 years that help me enjoy the journey a little bit more. Tip number one, and I've just spilt some tea, so as I, as I, as I wipe the tea, tip number one is a mindset shift. And that's just having the mindset that the thing that we're doing or the work or whatever we wanna call it is gonna be fun. This is like absolutely game changing. Anytime I've had a situation in my life where I felt stressed or I felt unmotivated or I felt like, oh, I'm not being productive enough, usually it's because I forgot to have fun. And there's a great phrase that the, I think, philosopher Alan Watts used, which is about approaching things sincerely versus approaching things seriously. Uh, and I often find myself approaching things too seriously. Like, you know, it's no fun playing a game with someone who's taking it too seriously. And so when I remember to have fun, I switch to approaching things sincerely, like I'm still gonna give it my all, but I'm gonna recognize that this is a game and I'm gonna try and enjoy myself while I'm doing it. So mindset shifts can definitely be beneficial, but what we find consistently in behavioral science data is that you know a mindset shift works about this well, an environmental change works this well. So while it's definitely not a bad piece of advice, if you're looking to make long-term change to your habits, 
don't rely on simple mindset shifts, but instead try and redesign your environment because it's far more likely to work. Tip number two is all about turning things into a game. Now this used to be a very popular like corporate speak thing back in the day, I think like 10 years ago, gamification, it was all about gamification. And if you gamified the workplace, then the employees would be more motivated and more productive. And so the word gamification, a lot of people now like vom a little bit in their mouths when they hear it because it just sounds so, you know, it hogs back to that, that era. But I think gamification is actually like absolutely game changing. So for example, when I was going through medical school, in my first year of med school, I really, really struggled because I had the mindset of this is supposed to be hard. Uh, and I didn't, I, I just didn't have the, the thought like I could treat this as a game. But in my second year of medical school, I started treating things more as a game. And so when I would make my revision timetables, I'd kind of write down all the subjects I needed to know. And then I would color code them based on how well I knew them. And so they would, st they would all start off as red. And then as I got better at them, they'd go yellow and then they'd, and then they'd go green. And just that kind of color coding helped me think of it more as a game. And so when I'd be studying, I'd be looking forward to testing myself with Active Recall. And then I'd be looking forward to that box on my Google Sheet turning green. And just that added element of gamifying the process made it so much more fun to study. And it also helped me get a first class degree in my, in my second year exams, which I hadn't done in my first year when I thought things were gonna be really, really hard. So I'll have a whole video about gamification coming out in a few weeks. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you wanna see that. But Ali Abdal is totally right. Gamification is a great way to encourage you to make doing the things that you're doing Fun. Tip number three for making stuff more fun is to bring others on board, is to do, do things with your friends. Doing things with a friend is one of the most powerful ways you can make any unproductive behavior fun. The first reason is that it's extremely versatile. Whether you're trying to study more, work out more, uh, cook healthy meals, doing it with a friend will just inherently make this behavior more fun. And what makes the reward of being with a friend really powerful is that it isn't the same each time, right? Sometimes we have a great time with our friends, sometimes we have a pretty meh, okay time with our friends, and that variation and unpredictability of how rewarding an experience is going to be actually makes the association between the behavior and the reward that much stronger in the brain. So if you can find a friend who you like spending time with and who's willing to do this productive activity with you, it's honestly one of the best things that you can do to build your good habit. Tip number four is to actually really think about setting the appropriate stage for our productivity in service of this thing of like, we, we wanna be trying to have more fun. And so for me, I often think about like the tools and the environment around me as making something more fun. So for example, if I have a nice little teapot, it's in blue, blue's my favorite color, and this coral mug, this is kind of nice. I've got my MacBook here, I've got a little sleeve on it, case thing. This whole aesthetic makes me really enjoy, for example, if I was studying for an exam or if I was kind of working on a video script, Sitting on here, it would be quite fun. I'm quite enjoying making this video because, you know, I've got this stuff around me, I've got my little fake plant. The environment around me is like I've designed in a way that appeals to my personal aesthetic sensibilities, and therefore, whatever I do in this environment automatically becomes more fun. This is the same principle behind why I like to have a fancy ass desk setup. And you don't even need to have a fancy ass desk setup for this, because when I was in med school and I was broke and I had no money, I still put in time and effort to thinking, okay, how do I arrange my books and my laptop on my desk and like, you know, add this little plant? How do I arrange it in a way that makes me feel good inside? Because when it comes to studying for my exams, if I'm in my room and I'm on my desk, I'm doing it, I just have more fun when the environment is more aesthetic and more nice. And so for Ali, having a nice aesthetic desk setup just makes being there more enjoyable. And that really shows you the flexibility of this principle. Basically, whatever makes you happy, whether it's having a nice desk setup like Ali or spending a time with a friend, it really doesn't matter. As long as you enjoy it and that you're enjoying it at the same time as you doing the behavior, then that will really help you to be motivated and uh, do that behavior more often. Other things around this is working with music. I have a study with me playlist on Spotify that has instrumental music from like the Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter and Prides of the Caribbean and the Marvel stuff. And when I have that playing on the speakers or through my headphones, it makes the work more fun. And yes, according to the evidence, studying with music or working with music does reduce focus very, very slightly because it interferes with some aspects of like, you know, short-term memory processing, but that's fine. I don't care. I would rather have a bit more fun by listening to music than squeeze out a little bit of extra productivity by working in complete silence. Listening to music is a great way to make many activities more enjoyable and fun. In fact, that's exactly what Katie Milkman did in her study on temptation bundling. So if you guys don't know what temptation bundling is, basically it's the idea that we're talking about in this video, which is you take an unrewarding behavior and you pair it with some kind of rewarding stimulus. And so to make listening to music even more effective, what you do is you listen 
listen to the music while you study, but then you make sure that when you're not studying, you're not listening to that same music. This way, your brain can make a stronger connection between the rewarding music and the behavior of studying, which will help to trick your brain into actually really liking studying because it'll go, oh, when I study, I get to listen to that nice music, and so you're more likely then to do it. And that brings us to Ali's final score. So if this is your first episode of Fact Checked, the way it works is that everybody starts out at 10 out of 10, and then we deduct points for each incorrect thing that they say. And Ali, I'm very happy to say that you have achieved full marks, 10 out of 10 from me, Great stuff, mate. So everyone loves Ali Abdal, and I'm not surprised that he got full marks on this video. If you have any suggestions for other people that I should be fact-checking on this series, please let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you in next week's video. All right, thank you guys so much for watching, and see you next time. Bye-bye. Ali's teapot is much nicer than mine though, isn't it?